Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. This episode is about this accidentally apocalyptic, stupid looking, and but also a bit cool looking, I guess, helmet. But looks aside, this is very practical and this is the result of a couple of iterations of me trying to come up with a perfect airsoft helmet for myself and I think I'm really close to it. It's not perfect, but it has served me really well so far and in this episode I'm gonna show to you its features, details and talk about my design decisions, why and how I made them. Before we start, a disclaimer, if you use any of my advice or information, you're doing so entirely at your own risk. I encourage you to do your own research, draw your own conclusions and use your own brain. With that out of the way, let's begin with this. Now, why make something like this at all? Why not just shell out a couple of euros, dollars, whatever, for a high-level uh, paintball or airsoft full protective mask? I have tried those. In fact, I have tried the one that was um, not only marketed, but also reddited by real people as the most comfortable, super light, what the best field of vision and whatever just felt like being in one of those old-school scuba diving suits from 18th century. By comparison to this, I'm not saying that mask was bad, I even forgot what it was, but this is so much better because it's my own design and it fits me perfectly. It feels like so much better, it has some features that are great, such as this defogging unit that I've built myself and uh, a bunch more stuff. So before we go into all the details, I am gonna just put this thing on. Here is something I wear under it. It's just a merino tube scarf kind of thing, so my bald head is not in direct contact with this, which feels kind of awkward and, uh, and sticky. So uh, I wear this uh, double layer up here, just, you know, put it on like this, roll it up, put it especially over the ears for a bit colder weather, but uh, usually, in most cases, just like this single layer, this works. Um, also works with a balaclava like this. Uh, this one is synthetic and this one is made of merino wool. Both works fine. So here we go. Uh, the mask is fully detachable by the way. I'm gonna do that just now. And not for the reason that I would ever play without it, but yeah. I put it on like this and here we go. So for example, uh, when the round is over, but I'm still in the, you know, the hot zone, uh, but people are no longer really playing, I'll just take off the mask or have it hang to one side like this, right? But when I'm playing, it looks like this. Yes, it looks like an absolute gimp mask with this. Oh God, this, this looks really stupid, especially with these things, but those all serve a purpose, okay? Uh, so maybe in the break, something like this, if the break is really short and I just want to drink some water or maybe in the spawn point um, where I have my spawn bag with a bit of water in it in a long round, such as like one and a half hour rounds or something, I'll have a drink now and then, just do this, drink, close this up again, good to go. So it being detachable really works for me. Now, uh, since I've already started with it, uh, what is this or what was this? It was one of those uh, cheap ass Amazon airsoft masks for like seven or 10 euros. And this, like ironically, is the design that works best for me uh, for a couple of reasons. And of course I have cut it up here. It also has like ear pieces. Those come from the same mask. I've just integrated them with the helmet uh, main body, I guess, uh, while removing the cheeks and mouth and the neck protection here. Uh, but this cheap ass mask, even without modification, works really well for a lot of people for the reason that the cheeks, uh, they have this um, soft stuff, so when you have your rifle's butt, it doesn't really interfere with it like hard masks do. Uh, the middle where your uh, nose and mouth is, this is just steel mesh. And while it looks freaking stupid, it is really breathable. Unlike having a balaclava here, even a thin balaclava will result uh, for me in 
uh, fogging up of the glasses more because I breathe the air, ex exhale, it goes up in the glasses and stuff, gets wet here. It's a bit muffled with even a thin piece of cloth here. So just having this mesh here works so much better for breathability, being able to uh, talk and shout and whatnot and not fogging up the glasses additionally with the breath because it's just directed out as if you were wearing almost nothing in those terms. But it does protect from BBs, obviously. It's still mesh. So here it is. Um, now, inside of the, these cheek parts, in the original masks, there, uh, mask, there is an additional layer of some sort of foam. Like you can see on the inside here, there is like this kind of fabric that all of you will know. Also like from backpack straps and stuff, like this goes on the skin. Uh, like between this layer and the outer layer, there was an additional layer of foam. I've removed that. I have not felt any uh, difference. Uh, whenever I get hit on it, I just feel it uh, or rather hear it and not really feel any pain or discomfort whatsoever. Even, you know, with the additional padding inside of it removed, it's still really thick. And it's also not like it's like super tensioned against my face. It is on my face, but it's, yeah, it, it does what it needs to do. Now, uh, I'm going to turn on the anti-fog unit here because my glasses are, are fogging up. I'm going to get to that one later. But uh, let's stay with the mask for now. So I've sewn on some um, Velcro here and here with the soft uh, Velcros on the mask because that goes towards the face. And there are some hard Velcro or hook Velcro sides here and here. So uh, I can align the mask on the nose in the middle, go here, go here, pu pull this one a bit in. And here we go, nice and centered. Also, with both sides being detachable, I can even out the tension so the whole thing is not, you know, kind of skewered off like this. Let's talk about the neck protection. Uh, this is some sort of, uh, here is some sort of soft surface and this is like neoprene-like thing. Maybe it's neoprene, maybe it's something else. But this is a kind of heavy rubber-ish kind of stuff. I think it was like from a leg brace, like orthopedic leg brace or orthopedic waist brace, something that people use when they're injured uh, to give some support. And I had some of that brace in my uh, junk crate and I've uh, used it like this. And what this does is, as you can see, it covers a lot of my neck. Like, usually I also don't play in a t-shirt, there's going to be like a short here that has a collar which goes up, uh, which by itself is uh, nothing to write home about in terms of uh, neck protection. Uh, but these things have held every BB I have received so far. Uh, like, yes, there is some gaps, can never be 100% sure. Uh, yeah, because they're, first of all, they're hanging and they're also heavy and kind of rubberish, so... A BB, it is, even if it's traveling fast, it is still pretty light, so it doesn't have a lot of a chance. It's also really mobile. It doesn't hinder my range of motion whatsoever uh, because uh, these are in segment and also they are kind of soft. Uh, there is also like a Velcro thing here where I can connect this to close this gap. And even without being in segments, like this does not hinder me from doing this rotating my head all the way around i don't have any here because i think getting hit here is not as bad as getting hit on like the sides of the neck and stuff and also it will usually have my uh, scarf uh, or like head scarf tube bandana thingy hanging here so it offers a bit of protection okay uh why not just wear a she mug uh, those are hot I want to really be not hot during air, so that's another reason for segmentation. Because this is not like one thing that goes around my uh, neck and just hinders air movement. It's a bunch of segments and it's just working really well for me, for protecting me from most BBs uh, and also, you know, not getting in the way otherwise. There is some bump insert 
like it's called Ergodyne uh, bump insert, I think. It's for workers uh, that wear normal hats, so n not like a hard hat. I'm actually gonna show that to you now. Here it is. Like this is a plastic insert and you can insert it into beanies or boonies or baseball caps or whatever. And I've inserted it in this, which used to be a German army winter hat, by the way. I've just removed all the warm layers and just left the outer layer and worked from that. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, this is this Ergodyne bump insert and it provides a bit of protection against, you know, hitting your head on stuff, but obviously not as much as a big bump helmet, the proper one, or like a ballistic helmet or whatever. Uh, I didn't, I tried normal helmets and it was like, was like, it's big and bulky and since the weight is far away from my head, moving it around felt a bit tedious and stuff. I'm not trying to look like a soldier, I'm just trying to have fun playing airsoft. I've chosen this, it's a bit slimmer, or a lot slimmer, and it's uh, also lighter. I do know that it protects me less well should I trip and really hit my head on something, that's a risk I am taking. Uh, that said, uh, if not the protection from BBs, which this serves uh, primarily, I would actually probably be running around without it as well, because again, it gets hot and stuff, but I don't want to get hit by BBs. Additionally, I get a bit of bump protection that works fine for me, and I do know the risks of playing Airsoft. Uh, if you are a kind of person that values safety and, uh, like, especially against bumping your head on something, then maybe opt in for something more protective, but for me this works fine. Now, uh, I've shown you the bump insert, I've talked about this hat. Uh, let's talk about these eyelets here. Now, I've made holes, big holes, and inserted big eyelets. And these are leading directly into, you can see my finger from the other side here, uh, to the spots in this bump insert, which are also there for ventilation. I have kind of aligned the holes as well as I could. And uh, this whole insert thing is glued in from the inside with double-sided adhesive tape so it doesn't shift against the helmet uh, fabric. Oh, why are they shiny and not like painted green or black or camo or... At the point where these eyelids or the fact that my glasses also reflect, I guess, or like these goggly eyes which I've added here for fun, uh, at the point where they would really make a difference in my performance as an airsoft player in terms of being detected or scoring hits before they score hits on me and spot me sneaking around, before that matters even remotely, I don't, I don't think it ever does because if the whole big thing is not exactly like painted in shiny colors, if it's subdued greens and olives and stuff like here, I think it it's fine. Like I don't see, I, I see so many people on the airsoft field who think their camo makes them invisible, but then they move around and you see them immediately or they are contoured against something and all, all those other things. So unless you're like really great at these things, I don't think a couple of shiny spots matter, nor does this box. Although this I might paint at some point green. Now that I see it on video, maybe it's a bit too bright. And uh, here is also, as well as on the other side, like a piece of belt really, which is kind of thick, so it gives me some protection from BBs. And uh, this is also attached to this relatively thin main fabric that holds everything together, basically. The purpose of this main fabric that used to be a German army winter hat is just holding everything together. And also, yes, it gives that kind of a pilot look, which I think is cool. Now, um, the ears are also great because they're protected against the BBs because it's the same mesh material as here, but my hearing is not really uh, hindered. Now, let's move on to the strap of the goggles. Uh, you might ask why didn't I attach them in a way that, you know, just kind of terminates here, just attaches them on the shortest way possible. And the reason for that is that I want to be able to vary the tension of my goggles a bit. Sometimes I fiddle around with this tension attachment on the goggle strap to give myself more or less tension. That said, the uh, 
goggles are connected to the proper helmet up here. Should the strap fail or especially this rusty bolt which holds it together fail, um, I still am not without glasses in the middle of the game. Let's address this box and this here, these hoses. What this is, is a defogging unit that I've made myself from an electric box. Uh, there is a Noctua fan inside of it, some uh, AA batteries, batteries, three of them, and a simple switch. Listen to this. I don't know if you can actually hear it. This is not so loud, like a swarm of bees. Like, you know, I've seen dudes with those uh, Chinese sets of goggles with, like, defogging fan, and it goes like... I've tried out so many things, different glasses, different goggles, different combinations, different whatever. Literally the only thing that consistently works is actively defogging with something like this. Now, there are units like this from Novridge, there is also one from Fog Axe. I have not tried those. Those might be just better or worse versions of this, but this is my DIY solution, uh, which basically does essentially the same thing, which is blow air from this into the goggles. Now, uh, some of you more educated ones on the topic will uh, possibly say, but blowing air into your goggles might irritate your eye, uh, because that is an information that I also have come across. Neither for my friend, nor for me personally, that's true. It might be true for some other people, I don't know. But I personally, after a bunch of airsoft games with this blowing air constantly into my goggles, have never had a problem with, like, getting an eye infection from this or whatever. My eyes have always been fine afterwards. Might be different for, for you, might be different for other people, but for me that was never the problem. And the reason why I've decided to... Because I could have arranged it any way possible, you know? The reason why I've decided to blow air into the goggles is because I don't want the hot air, hot humid air in the goggles to be sucked out and go basically into the whole batteries and fan and whatnot, gunking that up, collecting in the tubes, uh, screw that. And also then I have some humid air in, around my face, my own breath, all of that getting sucked into the goggles. I think it's less effective than blowing fresh air from behind my head in here. But again, uh, I think the Novridge one also does blow the air in. I don't know whether or not this whole thing with getting some uh, air blown into the goggles is a myth or if some people are just sensitive to that. Uh, I also think like if you were sucking the air out, wouldn't the air that rushes in to replace it also pass your eyes? I don't know how much truth there is in this uh, statement. I didn't bother to verify it. Another thing that was really important to this defogging unit, at first I tried PVC pipe for this, but it was terrible because it was gassing off something that would really irritate my eyes and it would also smell bad and um, it was just like, you know, construction store or aquarium PVC pipe. Why would you do that to your fish? I don't know. Either way, what I solved, uh, how I solved it was a um, food safe hose. So I think these hoses are usually used like in some sort of beverage machines or whatever else. Basically those are silicone food safe hoses and those have not been gassing off and irritating my eyes in a way that I would notice. So um, I think this is it. I hope you like this video and if so like, comment, subscribe, support me on Patreon if you are not supporting me yet and I will see you in the next episode. Hail the snail, have fun crafting and stay safe playing airsoft.